this tutorial we're going to look at creating a simple metal mailbox. So we'll start in the um, ISO sheet metal environment. And for the bottom half it's just going to be a simple um, rectangle. So we'll lock the plane with the F3 key. Start on the center and you can type in the sizes, that's going to be 250. Tab across, and we'll make it 400 long, and just enter for the angle. So you can see that we've got our profile. And from there, we can unlock the plane by clicking on the icon there. Click in the region, and you can specify your direction by clicking on the arrow. And we want that 2 mil thick and just click to finish. So we want um, four sides. One side can be sh slightly smaller. So um, we can do this in one movement. So if we hold the control key down, we can pick on all four edges at the same time. And then by picking on the smaller arrow, we can create flanges. And they're all sort of going to be um, tidily um, sorted out. On your options bar up here, we can specify whether we want material inside, outside, blend outside, and likewise dimension from the um, inside or outside. So I'm going to go outside dimension here, and material inside, and, and you can see the height dimension is already highlighted, so I can just type in 100 mil, and that finishes that off. So as I said, I want this one to be slightly smaller, so I can click on this edge here, and um, if I come into my design intent and turn off coplanar, um, if you hover, hover over it, um, you may notice that you can type the P key to um, turn that on or off. So I'm going to drop that down. Um, I'm going to turn the symmetry off as well. Um, drop that down 20 mil. And then just turn those two back on um, so that I don't get to forget about them later on. So um, I'm going to need a couple of holes here to pivot the top half of cross. So if I go to the hole command, then I want this to go through all. So as I said, this is your options bar. I can go in on this item here and specify that I want the hole size to be. 8 mil, and it's just going to be a sort of drill size, nothing too fancy. Um, you can change which hole type you want from on here. So if I go OK, and if I hover over this plane, hit the F3 key, Control H takes me into the um, sketch plane, um, Shift Control right mouse click allows me to um, pan. So I can place that dimension on there, and um, using the smart dimension, I can go from an edge to the hole. And I'll, um, so notice it's highlighting here, which means it's going to move it in this direction. If I change it so it's pointing this way, you see that this face is highlighting, so it increases the size of the part. So yep, that's the way I want to go and change that to 12.5 and you'll see the um, position of the hole change and likewise going in the other direction um, you want to have 12 and a half mil there as well so that completes the um, bottom half so we can um, save this And then we'll have the top half, which is, is again very similar. So we can go up here, go to new and isometric sheet metal. So this one's going to be slightly longer. Um, again, we'll start off with a rectangle, lock the plane with the F3 key, and come into the middle here. So this is going to be slightly larger, so we'll say 251.
and um, again slightly longer 450 and then again we'll make this two mil thick um, this way I'm going to go upwards and um, then we want to um, click on one edge control click on the other and again we want to bring this um, down um, and we'll make this say about uh, 50 mil deep so <clears throat> we want to just make sure that this size in here is what we're after so we left it on material inside so it's just dropped it in by four mil so I can click on there and I can lock this dimension and we want it going in both directions just to keep it symmetric and we said 251 is what we were after so you can see it's moving out both sides so that's the basic premise of what we're after um, we also want to adjust these two faces here and I'm going to turn off design intent I can click on the center of the steering wheel here and position that on the um, top edge and if I click on the um, torus on the steering wheel you can see that we can adjust the size so um, again I can angle those edges in um, just by clicking on there then if I click on the bottom edge here and drop that back to that point turn on design intent and this should then adjust both sides as you can see so I just want to bring this up a certain angle so we'll say about six degrees and put that in like so so we've got the um, holes that have got to come through here again so we'll add in a hole lock the plane control H takes me through and this time I'm going to dimension the hole from that bottom edge and then we want to make that 12.5 and then we want to move the hole down and likewise I'm going to dimension this and we're going to have that 56.5 Again, making sure that the hole is the thing that's moving, and we go unlock for that. Um, just for safety reasons, um, we will also break the corner, here and here, and I'll stick with a 5mm rad on there. So now we've got our um, top half complete. If we escape out of here and we then save this, so that's created our top half. We can go back to our bottom and we can go new assembly of active model so that just drops the first part straight into the assembly and it's sort of got the coordinate system of the assembly um, maintained with the coordinate system of the um, part so now we go to our parts library and we have the lid so I just drag that in and in the assembly all you're worried really about is the relationships so um, we could go with flash fit but I'm going to go specifically we want an axle alignment between there and there 
and also I'm going to use a center plane relationship so we want it set to double so we want the center plane between there and there so these two inside faces and we want again double on the part that we are associating with so we pick the two outside faces and that's now locked in on here so as you can see um, we sort of still a little bit um, off but I want to be able to rotate this just to see how the whole thing functions so I can go into drag component and the analysis options um, not worried about active parts because they're both active already um, so we want to detect collisions encountered by parts and subassemblies and we want to sound a warning and stop movement when collision occurs so we go OK pick on the part we want to move um, I've set it to rotate and I want to rotate about the x-axis and as you can see it's it's gliding straight away um, and you sort of can override that but if we um, bring this in you can see that what we've actually done is we've we've got our radius in here uh, which is slightly too small for the outside edge here so um, let's save the assembly and if I double click on the um, part um, the lids will already open anyway but we can double click on that and that will just open this one up so <clears throat> as we've seen we've got a 2 mil rad on the um, inside here um, so one mil each side but we've only got an internal gap of 251 so if I click on this dimension here and we'll make that slightly larger say 253 and that gives me a little bit of clearance between the um, rad and the part so we'll save that go back to our um, assembly and we can then um, go back to see that we now have that little bit of clearance on here so if I now go back to my um, drag component it's still gonna um, let's change those options um, turn that one off and you see that it's still highlighting orange to show that um, it's interfering and if, if we look in here we can see that we've actually got interference between these edges here so um, the ideal thing to do is to double click on the um, industry part and if we add um, a break corner I'm just going to turn off the um, display of the other part using the control Q so I'll click on these two and I'm going to set a, say a 10 mil rad on there so control Q to turn it back on again and that should hopefully give us enough clearance in there so if we close and return to the assembly we should be able to um, use that drag component now uh, stop moving back on and we're still seeing some interference here so we just need to um, look at where that is happening So if I go to um, inspect and we can go check interference. So anytime you see a tick, if you right mouse click, and you can see that we've we've still got a slight interference on on here. So um, if we go back into this part here. Um, 
I can <clears throat> click on here and click on the dimension, change it, change that to 15, and well, hopefully that will give us the clearance we're after. So going back to our home tab, drag component. Um, I can now turn this off. I'll only bring that up if, if and when I need it. So, so you can see we've, we've got the sort of full range of movement that we're after now. So um, you can see that sort of work, working through um, some, some sort of simple design like this is, is very easy.